The people of Anambra State in southeast Nigeria last Thursday celebrated the inauguration of former Central Bank Governor Professor Chukuma Charles Soludo as the sixth democratically elected governor of the state. Elected last October on the platform of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, Governor Soludo is expected to, among other things, address the insecurity challenges that have ravaged that part of Nigeria in recent times, owing likely to the activities of the proscribed indigenous peoples of Biafra. In his maiden address, the new governor unveiled what he called the Soludo Solution, an aggregation of his vision and mission for Anambra State during his four-year tenure. Be it the Soludo Solution a People's Manifesto for a Greater Anambra, and the third is the transition combined, the transition committee's combined report, which built on the first two documents. In sum, ladies and gentlemen on the bind, this is an agenda for an itinerant tribe in search of a livable and prosperous homeland. Driven by the philosophy of one Anambra, one people, one agenda. Our goal is to build Anambra into a livable and prosperous smart mega city. Yes. We are starting, as I said, tomorrow at Oboko. Somebody asked me from the south, asked me that the outgoing governor is from the north and is just handing over to someone from the south and you're also beginning your first job from the north. And I said, my response was, I believe in one Anambra, one people, one agenda. And our agenda, that one our goal is to build Anambra into a livable and prosperous smart mega city. We aim to transit beyond petroleum into the digital world of the fourth industrial revolution and envision Anambra as an industrial technology and leisure entertainment hub of West Africa. Our detailed plan rests on five key pillars. The first is law and order, and that is homeland peace and security. The second, economic transformation as Nigeria's next axis of industrial tech and leisure. And fourth is competitive and progressive social agenda to deal with education, health, youth, women, and vulnerable groups. And then governance, rule of law, and the rebirth of our value system. And finally, to aggressively tackling our existential threat posed by the environment. And that's towards moving towards a clean, green, planned, and sustainable cities, communities, and markets. For me, ladies and gentlemen, this agenda is also personal. I am here to join you in building a society where I will be proud to live in after leaving office. Ndebai, what we propose is what we collectively build, is that we collectively build a new social and economic order that guarantees and defends economic freedom and reward of private enterprise to secure our future, that any child born in Anambra will have little incentive to rush elsewhere. For more on what to expect in the next four years from the Soludo administration in Anambra State, we are now being joined by Dr. Chima Naji, a lawyer and a politician who once aspired to become the governor of Enugu State, also in the southeast of Nigeria. Dr. Naji, is good to... Uh, I see, see you again on uh, Arise Television, this time on This Day Live, the Sunday talk show. Thank you for joining us. Dr. Dr. Abati, nice to see you, and uh, Happy New Year. We haven't seen... Uh, yes, this, this year, year, yes, but it's good to have you. <laughs> and uh, a very good evening to your guests uh, in the studio. Uh, Thank you very I'm much. I'm not seeing whether they are in the studio, but you have mentioned a number of uh, those familiar names. Yes, they are here. Oh, they are, nice to they be are with here. them, too. Major stakeholders on this program. But Dr. <laughs> Naji, very quickly, we all witnessed what happened, the transition in the Anambra mm. State. And with, uh, you know, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo promising um, a Soludo solution, inclusive growth, human development, you know, local content development. He even said from the beginning, from the get-go, you know, he was going to get to work uh, demonstrating a new, uh, you know, approach to governance. Uh, but what's your take in terms of what uh, the Anambra State Governor, uh, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, uh, is promising the people of Anambra State? 
Even security, he addressed it. But what are the headwinds that he's likely to face? And what's your assessment of his sincerity beyond the rhetoric? Very good. I think I like the, the last uh, point you made. What is the sincerity behind the, uh, the promise, so to speak? But first and foremost, let's look at uh, the first symbolism. While the inauguration was going on, they showed a car made in Nigeria by Innocent Motors that this will be the, the vehicle for the governor of Anambra State. Innocent Motors is in Anambra State. Some past governors had patronized Innocent, but sometimes they did not make a little uh, noise about it so that the thing will uh, some kind of, uh, will somehow catch uh, the attention of uh, those people who can afford to buy that they shouldn't go far when they can just buy something so near. So that symbolism is very important. But like uh, you asked, rightly asked, you rightly asked the question whether there's sincerity. Some people know Soludo, even right from the university, a brilliant uh, a chap, he graduated first class, made the best result at the University of Nigeria in those days. And uh, ever since he has been on the upwardly mobile uh, uh, ladder, in the social ladder, so to speak, the issue is squarely within the ambience of an aphorism that this thing smells very strongly like a bullion cube. The bullion, not the one that carries uh, <laughs> uh, currencies. The bullion cube whether it will season the soup or the food like one is when you taste the food. That perhaps uh, captures the, the last statement you made about sincerity. I believe he has the capacity, and I do not have any reason to doubt his sincerity, because he should know that the expectations are too high of him. And this is not one of those platitudes politicians uh, play when they want to garner votes. The impediments on his way while he was uh, trying to climb the ladder of uh, uh, the, governor, the gubernatorial seat in Anambra State should signpost to him that the sacrifices people made. If you remember, I was in your studio on that very day the election was going on. We monitored that election bumper to bumper from your studio. I believe you gave it one of the best coverage than any other studio, any other television station in Nigeria that I should have even, I, I would have seen much later after uh, I left your studio. Uh, everybody saw that there was no room for any planned manipulation to succeed by manifesting in any manner whatsoever. With that kind of setting, it is humbling for anybody who emerges from that kind of setting where some individuals rejected the usual uh, gifts, you know, political gimmicks, we give you this so that you'll be that. And somebody said, I am interested in getting emancipated beyond the shenanigans of promises of uh, one cup of Gary or 10,000 Naira or what have you. That alone, even though somebody later got gratified for that particular behavior, openly and uh, sincerely, under the uh, previous administration, the fact remains that it remains indelible in the minds of the people that this is the representation of the, the renaissance of the new spirit of the Anambra people, who somehow got tired of the ten general Nigerian political, political, I mean, political terrain, where Manipulations take place. At the end of that four years, you just left uh, home and dry. So I believe that not only does uh, Soludo have the capacity to unleash what he has programmed for the state based on a, pain a painstaking study of the problems that have beset that state. Nambra State is uh, 
It's a, it's a small state, relatively speaking, but mighty. It has everything that can make it Texas or any other state in the U.S. that is very buoyant. And, uh, and um, presently, some people think that it is an elephant with a foot of clay. While you have billionaires and individuals, poverty is ravaging a few uh, individuals that are in the state. And that shouldn't be. Perhaps that, is what, uh, that was what informed Soludo, thinking of getting to work from the lowest pedestal of the social ladder. Uh, ladder. And uh, it is not for nothing that uh, many people have this expectation. So these expectations of him should make him to work harder. Because <laughs> if there is any snap in performance, hopes would have been eternally dashed of getting any, some, any person that will be emancipating the people of Anambra, Anambra State in this, perhaps in this millennium. Well, I mean, uh, Dr. Naji, this is not the first time that uh, uh, Professor Soludo will run for governor. He's been uh, in that race for years, I think since uh, 2009. What do you think is the kind of lesson that other political aspirants, particularly technocrats, can learn from his example? Um, you know, don't let me answer my own question. First and foremost, I'm sorry? Yeah, please go ahead. I didn't hear the last comment you made. No, Did I said that. Question? I, no, I was going to make a comment, and I said, oh, maybe I should not answer my own question. <laughs> <laughs> what the, 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 the answer to the question would uh, be like, uh, a carpenter that is using a saw must continually saw a position until the piece of wood is dismembered. If you do an eclectic and epileptic cutting, you will never get to the end of the other side of the wood. Somebody has to be consistent, keep faith. And a knife that could not cut a particular tree on a Monday should be sharpened for a bigger job on the Tuesday. So perhaps that is the lesson that needs to be learned. But in doing so, there is, a, uh, there is a element of diligence. You see, the, Nigerian, the typical Nigerian politician, I don't see Soludo as the typical Nigerian politician. Just like when I ran in Enugu as uh, the candidate for NDP, I saw PDP, I saw other P, uh, political parties. I did not join them because it was not just because I wanted to be in power. I wanted to be in power and have my own say the capacity to say, this is where I want to go, and no godfather will come in between. So when Soludo, you know, at the appropriate time, when the breakthrough ripens, it will fall. Now, Soludo is totally in charge. It is very obvious that he cannot give excuse that a godfather is coming in between. Perhaps in the past, there were godfathers that would have made it impossible for him to have manifested himself in the professional sense or professional way uh, that he probably would have wanted to acquit himself. But now, this is the right time, and there's no excuse to fail. Well, Dr. Naji, I would like to have your take on this uh, general position uh, that uh, Professor Soludo's uh, inauguration was upstaged by the uh, cat fight between two women the wife of the outgoing, outgone uh, governor of Anambra State, and the wife of Dim Udime Gojuku, the slapping, uh, you know, spectacle, and uh, all of that uh, ugly situation. Well, some people have said, well, uh, this is a desecration of uh, Alaibo, and that Omunna uh, Nedi Anambra uh, needs to uh, take a look at this. Uh, what's your take on that? You know, because this was uh, a battle of the wives that uh, more or less took attention away from the more important uh, matter, urgent present matter of statecraft. Well, first and foremost, let me just uh, say that the fact that Soludo 
had earlier harped on the need to keep everything short and simple helped a lot because it was if it was an elaborate program marked by pomp and pageantry perhaps this particular incident may have been reckoned more positively in the sense of disrupting the entire process and the fact that they were in fact happening happening simultaneously because they, it was not seriatim it was just that while the slapping uh, was going on this the swearing in was going on perhaps maybe i didn't i didn't watch to know it was, whether it was when Toludo says so help me god that the final uh, landing of the slap came or at what point but the important thing is that it appears that it was simultaneous um action and reaction they say are equal and opposite there is nothing so spectacular about uh, two women having some fracas. It's just that the personalities involved. And uh, clearly, thank God for video, it was seen that uh, there was an aggressor against somebody who was sitting down. Even if the event of the other person's aggression had taken place prior to uh, the governor's, uh, the ex-governor's wife, the, the law does not uh, recognize that if you are in the fit of anger, you can use, plead provocation after hours and days, perhaps weeks of that particular event. It is expected that the anger would have petered out to give you reason to think. But quite frankly, even though social media was agog, as naturally should be the case, given the two women involved, I don't think it took anything away from the shine that Soludo was now on the saddle and that the Anambra State uh, people were looking forward to a better life. And uh, it appears, quite frankly, very, very unfortunately so, that fate was at work, perhaps to seal the deal that what happened at that event should not have happened especially coming from the wife of the former uh, governor. I want to leave it at that. No, please, uh, Dr. Naji, uh, don't leave it at that. Uh, also, dear man, you know, sad uh, <laughs> of aggression. Ruben, what do you want from my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I is, it, <laughs> is it from my mouth that you want to hear that the king's mother is dancing naked in the market, and therefore she's mad? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm of a different stock. I don't know proverbs. I just want you to put it as it is. <laughs> anyway, quite frankly, I think the Ezozo, the Ezozo, the Obi of Oka, on, on which soil what the, 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 the traditional ruler uh, graphically described as uh, desecration of the land. And in Igbo land, if land is desecrated, it has to be, there must be some uh, propitiation or something like that or that will uh, appease the gods, you know, the quote unquote, the small g uh, that uh, probably uh, look at uh, over the land. And uh, the, the Igwe has. Uh, listed out certain things. He has pronounced uh, uh, judgment over the event and believe uh, that uh, as so many people think that the aggressor who had to walk from one place to identify Ojuku's wife, given the symbolism of Ojuku, if it were even in uh, Kano that this thing happened, it could have been mirrored with some speculations. Is it true? But happening in Anambra, and in an APGA event in which Ojuku's name had been used serially to win and consolidate victory for APGA, I don't think that was uh, the best. It didn't, uh, the, 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 and uh, even uh, the, the issue of respect for the governor, the ex-governor, uh, is an issue. How could the, first, the former governor uh, be there and the wife will not even look at him and uh, refrain from such uh, uh, conduct that, is, that was designed or actually that promised
to bring uh, so much uh, disgrace to her, even personally, to her personally. Okay. And uh, look at how she was shouting uh, certain obscene words. So these things were not good for. So I don't think I, I would like to be uh, the megaphone for repeating that because it was not the right thing. Although it is not out of place to have happened because such things could happen, may happen, but the probability of such recurrence may be very low, but it's a possibility. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Naji, just one small point of uh, correction. We were saying Abga, but uh, I thought the name is uh, Apuga. Apuga. That's what uh, I <laughs> If you want to ebonize it, okay. if you want to ebonize it, eh? yes. if you want to ebonize it, it's Apuga. Apuga. Just like you have the governor said that is a chale mwa mbafo. Yeah? <laughs> that is bringing it home to the grassroots. Okay. But I'm on a national television. Okay. So Apuga would have meant A-P-U-G-A. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before you joined us, we had uh, Professor Chidi Odinkanu commenting on the judgment in Umahia uh, on the issue of uh, Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. And it was of the opinion that that particular judgment was crooked and that, uh, you know, the judge, uh, uh, you know, uh, didn't give a good ruling. What's your take on that uh, ruling, Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act? I, will, I, I wouldn't be, I will be frank, I didn't uh, hear or see what uh, the erudite prof said, but I have my own opinion too. I, I subscribe to the fact that that ruling, that judgment needs to be appealed so that it can be overruled. It leaves a bitter taste in the mouth of our jurisprudence, if our jurisprudence should be described as having a mouth in which the tongue should be tasting something good or, or bad. Quite frankly, uh, Dr. Abati, uh, I watched the, um, the Attorney General of the Federation a few days before that judgment, nobody knew that such a thing was in the offing. He said there were so many ways they could come about that particular uh, section 8412 if the Senate, as he did, because for once, I also applauded the Senate for ignoring that letter because or the pronouncement, the, pre the president was like making it a condition uh, that they should go back, you boys. You go back, even though I have a public opinion against my not signing the Electoral Act. But I'm doing it now, no, but you better go back, like a headmaster talking to school pupils. I think even on the, on the front of ego, the National Assembly members, for one, said, for Christ's sake, this guy is going. I cannot be whipping us like this. And it was a very disgraceful thing that even the senior president could repeat, repeat the year or nay, because he didn't seem to have gotten... The, the answer he needed. So I think the judge, the judge perhaps should be made to understand through appeal that uh, the, the, the ruling, the judgment is wrong. Because what the judgment is based on is not on section 8412. Section 8412 is specific about political appointees and not public servants. Public servants are very clearly defined and under section uh, 318 of this, uh, the, the Constitution. And political appointees are those who can be hired and fired at the whims and caprices of the appointor. But anybody who has a public service appointment has a, a statutory flavor that you cannot be the, 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 uh, dismissed like that without NIC making some pronouncement on it. So I think that, uh, and the fact, quite frankly, the constitution of uh, parties was also wrong. That shows you there was premeditation. The, the uh, AGF said they would deal with the situation one way or the other. The, 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 the what do they call it? That uh, the owl cried, the witch cried in the night and the baby died in the morning. Well, something may have been amiss, but that is very, very sad commentary on the side of the AGF that he allowed himself to be made a party. 
so that he will remain dormant. He will not challenge it. So that after the, uh, the usual thing, when, you, when a judgment is given against you, you do something to show that you are not happy about it. This one, short of going to his village to do some party. Because it made sure that all of them who want to participate in the, in the primaries will be there without uh, resigning. The, the parties are the ones targeted, not the general election of Nigeria, the ones conducted by INEC. And they lumped it together. You cannot go fishing and leave the fish and carry the, the, the root of uh, the, the, the tap root of the tree. Yeah? The aquatic uh, tap, tap root of the tree there. That is what they have done. But they want to lump it together and present it as fish. It's not, it's not going to happen. So some interested parties should apply to the Court of Appeal to be joined. And they will appeal that case and get the right judgment. So for the sake of our jurisprudence, for our laws, so that there will be no wrong interpretation of law, you know, uh, I, I have no business making any further comment on the, the judge. Perhaps what they were presented to the judge was what the judge, the, the best understanding. But that is why we have Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Because we know that those people at the lower bench may not be as experienced or as motivated to do more research. So there's always room for further ventilation. So they should not allow, this one they are gloating, that they should delete. And this is the end of the matter. This, there's no more section 8412. That shows premeditation. Well, on that note, I would like to So, thank my you. dear, what I'm saying in essence is that I am not subscribing to that judgment, but for now, it remains a judgment, valid and subsisting, but it is not good for our jurisprudence. It must be challenged. Yeah, and appropriately, I guess it will be challenged at the uh, appellate courts. I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Chima Naji, for joining us on This Alive, this Sunday talk show.